Hello everyone, this is Mr. Informal back with the latest and greatest Mr. Informal podcast. I hope you are doing well today and certainly I hope you are healthy. And please, please, I hope you are safe. I hope you're being cautious and certainly I hope you are enjoying life. And this is the Mr. Informal podcast 191. Yes, 191 inching closer to podcast 200. So uh, please do not forget to add me on Instagram, M-I-S-T-E-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L. And then check out my website, MrInformal.com, M-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L.com. So what do we have on this podcast well number one we have uh blockchains yes blockchain is uh is definitely more important these days number two Re- levi's red tab is now going to target the store target number three nft scam has risen up last but not least is that uh, crypto is now getting more uses Also, in these days, especially the war, crypto are now being used a lot. So those are the four topics in this Mr. Informal Podcast 191. And so let's go ahead and start the podcast. So uh, first topic is blockchain uh, from RetailDive.com titled Blockchain Drives Transparency in the supply chain so uh, while blockchain is often talked about in relation to cryptocurrency it's already being used in supply chains to create greater visibility and transparency repeating supply chain today and the volume of paper and faxes and email and data exchanges and phone calls that actually support the process it seems pretty obvious that if you could get enough people to streamline these things using a common system and a common application you get a whole lot of value out of that process said Scott from Emerging Technology Research Managing Director at Deloitte. So, uh, blockchain boosts traceability. Now, I'm not a fan of that, but reading on the paragraph, blockchain gain footing grocery, knowing the source of a product can be a matter of life or death. The technology is allowing retailers to quickly pinpoint the source of outbreaks and pathogens like E. coli. Walmart, which uses IBM's blockchain platform, says it can trace sources of mangoes in one of their stores in 2.2 seconds before they would need six days. Not only does blockchain help a retailer know quickly where outbreaks started, but it also means that they know which food items need to be destroyed. What can they stay sh- uh, and what can stay on the shelves? So I'm not a fan of that because number one it's supposed to be decentralized number two blockchains was originally used as no form of traceability i am not a fan of that but you see these companies are using the word blockchain wrong i mean they're saying oh it's all one central system i mean you we could have done that even before blockchain but then again that just shows you how Companies that are not on the technology side don't know anything, don't know what to research, don't know what to invest in, and don't know what to actually use when it comes to their system. And this, the whole blockchain movement basically showed the whole world are not using the right type of technology or they're not not right not the right type of softwares. Because if they did, we wouldn't go through this. Uh, in the paragraph there's a title called uh, who governs a decentralized system for blockchain to work across the supply chain everyone involved must add information about products to it and make that information accessible to anyone now all organizations feel comfortable sharing with data others there's that there's my point you see blockchain was not supposed to be doing this and it's not so I don't understand what's people using a uh, t- using it apparently blockchain is the new it word is the new trend around the whole internet uh, buzz so for these companies to even have blockchains and say and, and say oh we can access we can pinpoint we can actually measure data so and so what 
you could do that without blockchain and i've said that before in the beginning but look i'm glad that blockchain is being used more but i am not happy that it's being used in the wrong way not in its original form because again blockchain is not supposed to be giving your data it's not supposed to be giving your privacy it's not supposed to be giving your location so again we should call it a different term not blockchain but in any case blockchain is going to be used in the metaverse apparently um whatever that means so it's just another form of facebook collecting data on to the second topic titled from retail.com titled levi's bring its premium red tab jeans to 300 and more target stores so levi strauss and company apparently favors target as a retail partner the iconic denim brand expanding sales of its premium red tab jeans and other apparel items to 300 more target stores according to a target blog post <laughs> more than 60 new styles will come to target for more than 180 total across men's and women's and company said in an email a certain will vary by store with some posts with some items and extended sizes available online only online per target post target which previously sold only levi's budget denison label began selling the red tab line in 2019 in just 50 stores expanding to 500 the following year since production the red tab items Target has sold more than a million pairs of Levi's per company's email. Oh, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. Now, there's going to be a catch to this. Now, in the, later in the paragraph, Levi's in particular has slightly pulled away from wholesale so that by 2019, it had declined 30% of its business down from about half of the business eight years before. Meanwhile, by the end of fiscal year 2020, DTC approximately percent nearly 40 percent of levi's business from 20 percent in 2011 according to filing sec now i already know that when it comes to this so-called premium red tab it's not really pure premium think about this early in the 90s when i was young levi's you could buy levi's and target uh walmart jc penny you know the normal kind of Levi's, no premium, none of that. Even the 80s, 70s, Levi's was just a budget brand. Yes, it was an all-American, the blue collar. You can just buy it wherever and stuff. And that include the red tab. And now they have this called premium red tab. Levi's marketing it as a premium red tab, iconic red tab, whatever it's called. Come on. You actually think that Levi's is going to store this so-called premium line onto Target? I don't believe that because I know what's going on in Levi's when it comes to their production development. So I also know people who work at, who used to work at Levi's. So what's going to happen is that Levi's is going to offer lower quality fabrics and then they're gonna put the red label and then sell it to target that's what's gonna happen another thing is that it doesn't matter if you say oh well levi is diluting itself it's not gonna be the swell called premium well levi's was never a premium brand let's be real same thing with converse people think converse chucks is the premium no it's not i mean let's be honest here so I think that Levi's is gonna sell their jeans at target prices but with a lower quality fabric I don't think it's gonna be very it's not gonna be high quality think about it, you think you're gonna have salvage then in target I mean if that happens it's gonna be a lot of lines in Levi's there will be lines it's gonna be so uh, selling out won't be surprised if eBay if some of those items shows up in eBay so uh, look, I don't mind them expanding uh, it doesn't really matter uh, being a target definitely has more reach 
certainly they're making money off of it because they're making uh they sold over 100 million levi's at target so it is what it is but it's gonna come with a catch on to the third topic from hype beast u.s justice department charges frosties nft creators over rug pool scheme the young adults may face up up to 20 years in prison basically to send a message to these scams the u.s justice department has arrested 20 year old creators of the frosties nfts in a project in la after they suddenly shut down the discord and disappeared with over 1.1 million dollars of ethereum this is the first known action from a Department of Justice regarding rogue pools in which fraudster generate excitement over a project promising certain benefits according to a roadmap that end up running away with money soon after funds are invested. According to a blockchain an, uh, uh, analysis firm Chain, Chain Analysis, rogue pools accounted 30% of crypto scam revenues in 2021, installing $2.8 billion up just one percent back in 2020 so there you go that's why i don't invest in a lot of nfts also i know you get a lot of nft art these days but if i can't put it on my wall if i can't see it right in front of me i'm talking about in a physical world i'm not investing in it I know people want to act like NFT is so cool, but it's really not. I think there was a well, look, there was a time when NFT were cool, where it had importance because if you buy something, you own it. That's it. There's nothing. There's no one in the world has it, right? No one. But apparently, NFT these days are are just nothing anymore they're not special because brands are diluting it you know if you make an nft it better be one of something it can't be one in a million it can't be one of one million it has to be like one of one or one of five it has to have a scarcity it has to have a rarity of it it has to be uncommon but nope people these days are just buying nft like just like it's like you know just like mcdonald burgers it's like buying masks in 2020 where you needed it and apparently you don't need nfts anymore so uh look I, i'm sure there are more scams out there than this and i think this is one of those cases where the u.s justice department is sending a message even though you the u.s justice department is corrupt uh, but again, this is just one of those that they just want to send a message to the scammers. But the scammers are not going to stop because the thing is with this U.S. Justice Department, they don't know that these scammers are very smart. I mean, they do everything digitally. They hide their locations. Uh, they don't know these the, these so-called police don't know where they are. So it's just going to keep continuing on. Not only that, you got these stupid people not doing enough research too. So you have before you invest in these NFT, you gotta do research. You can't be like, oh, I'm the first one. No. Also, you gotta uh, spend money where you think you could lose it. Don't just spend it just because you want to. Spend money where you think you know you're gonna lose it. So, in other words, just be careful investing in NFTs. So, last topic is crypto usage so you know there's a war going on between russia ukraine and there's also a cyber war going on between well everybody and there's a lot of countries out there that sanction russia uh, a lot of co uh, countries also basically hold russia's money even though that's Russia's money and they're not supposed to be holding their money because Russia decided to put their money in other countries' banks, such as the US and the UK that are basically sanctioning them. Also, there's a lot of people in Russia, normal people, that has their money being hold. That means they can't take him out. 
also their currency the rubles is being devalued by other countries out there so what do people in russia do well they decided to get on crypto and also use cryptocurrency what kind of cryptocurrency they're using i don't know it could be sheeb shiba inu could be uh doge could it be uh, bitcoin could it be ethereum cardano solano i mean anything but the fact is is it just shows how cryptocurrency is suddenly becoming more prominent be becoming more important in this world also since it is a cryptocurrency and it's decentralized it is supposed to be decentralized no one control your money now i know i talk about another uh, crypto wallet out there uh, i think it was wasabi something like that and they decided to hold uh, people uh, you cannot do certain transaction or they can block certain transaction well good luck to that company but in any case everything's supposed to be decentralized so no one is gonna hold your money no one's blocking your transaction through blockchains no one is supposed to be doing that and so that's what a lot of people in Russia are doing now I know that Russia is also going to use China Union Pay because Visa and MasterCard decided to stop doing business in Russia and so they decided to go with China's Union Pay which Union Pay is also uh, um, business going up because of that so but just to the normal people people uh, these normal Russians are using cryptocurrency and you know what good for them good for them because as you know I, or I'm not sure you know there's a thing called central bank or they're they're the one who's controlling the world's currency the world's money and you and you kind of wonder why is the dollar always so strong why is everyone using the dollar well it's probably because of the United States and its influence on the so-called central banks but with cryptocurrency no one is controlling it no country this is why they're trying to stop cryptocurrency or they're trying to control uh, cryptocurrency they're even trying to tax people with cryptocurrency but hey the more this goes on the more that crypto is being much much important and you know there's a lot of people in russia that are using this so i'm actually really glad that people in russia are using this also the great thing about this is no one in Russia is able to uh, is able to control crypto. They probably can't even trace the transaction. Also, all these sanctions can't even trace the transaction. They can't even uh, sanction cryptocurrency. How can you sanction something if no one is controlling it? This is why it's really important to make sure everything is decentralized. And I don't want my money to be centralized why do you think people have different banks it's not just one bank that you know they have money all over the place if you were a billionaire why do you, why would you put your one money into one bank that doesn't make sense and so the the usage of cryptocurrency is rising especially at these times and so that basically it uh, for the podcast 191 I am mr. informal Hopefully you enjoy uh, this podcast 191. Hopefully you listen to me from beginning to end. And if you did, I am very thankful for that. And certainly I do appreciate it. Uh, last but not least, uh, please do not forget to add me on Instagram. M-I-S-T-E-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L. And then check out my website, mrinformal.com. M-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L.com. And so please be safe, be healthy, always stay healthy, and please enjoy life. And so I will see you in the next podcast. Bye-bye.